Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. You know, with the recent passing of David Crosby, naturally I've been listening to you know a bit of his material, kind of from all you know, Birds, CSN, Solo, Crosby and Nash, kind of everything. I keep coming back though to his solo debut album, 1971's "If I Could Only Remember My Name." A, a remarkable album. You know, I, I talked a little bit about it in my you know, tribute video to, to Crosby. And I mean, it, it's <laughs> there really is not much like it out there. It's ethereal, it's mysterious, it's, it's, it's kind of wide open feeling, moody, improvisational, daring, but there's still some structure to some of it. You know, as improvisational as it is, it still also contains some of you know, the best songwriting, best songs that he ever did. So I thought it would be interesting to do a you know, kind of a deep dive into this album because it's got an interesting backstory and so delve into some of these songs a little bit. So sort of what's happening here, obviously, the CSN had you know, started out in 1969 with their debut, which was huge. Then, of course, they add Neil Young to the mix. Deja Vu comes out in 1970. And then in about the year or so following Deja Vu, all four of them put out really notable solo albums. I, I mean, Neil Young does his Neil Young thing, right? So after the gold rush from Neil... Stephen Stills puts out his excellent debut, Stephen Stills. Graham Nash puts out Songs for Beginners, which I think is his finest work. Uh, th this is also a minor masterpiece. I don't even minor. It's just, just a killer singer-songwriter album. And then, of course, David Crosby puts out this. And this is sort of the background here. In September of 1969, uh, Crosby's then girlfriend, Christine Hinton, Hinton uh, was driving. She was actually taking the cat or her cats to the vet and tragically got into a car accident and was killed. And this basically sent Crosby into this sort of spiral of grief and self-destruction. And uh, he was just in bad shape, as you might imagine. And so what was kind of interesting is you know, part of this record was therapy. You know, part of this record was a lot of his musician friends. And he had a lot sort of rallying around him and, and you know, trying to give him something to, to focus on and work on. And so... You know, I think some of that, you know, shadows some of this record as well. You know, some of that background. So it was recorded at um, Wally Hyder's Studios in San Francisco, which was sort of this kind of place where musicians hung out and, and sort of cross-pollinated. You know, the, the Grateful Dead recorded there. The Jefferson Airplane recorded there, and various members of those groups recorded solo projects there. I believe Bob Weir's Ace record was recorded there, which is awesome. Um, Paul Kantner recorded a solo album there around the same time period. You know, Kantner of, of, of the Airplane. Graham Nash, I believe, recorded his solo works there. So a lot of these guys sort of hung out in the studio, and they would just, you know, it was just sort of that time period and that atmosphere. They would just work on each other's records. And, and so there, you know, a lot of these guys overlapped and played on each other's albums around this time period. And so in such an atmosphere was assembled the Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra, which was named by Paul Kantner, which was basically this pretty much all-star group that was assembled to help Crosby record this. So included, you know, the, just the personnel on here. Neil Young is there. Graham Nash is there. Joni Mitchell is there, who, of course, had dated Crosby and then was dating Graham Nash. Greg Raleigh, you know, of Santana, 
and uh, you know later, of course, Brown's Journey, Michael Shreve, also of Santana, uh, Jerry Garcia, Phil Lesh, Bill Kreutzman, uh, Mickey Hart, all of the Grateful Dead are on there. Jack Cassidy, Jorma Kalkinen, Grace Slick, Paul Kantner, all of those guys from the Jefferson Airplane are on there. So all of these people are contributing. And, you know, you would think that Crosby would kind of get lost in the mix. But what's really interesting about this is with all of these contributors, and you can definitely kind of hear where these contributions are. I mean, you can especially pick out Jerry Garcia. He's all over this record. Uh, you know, you can pick out Neil Young in, in parts. You can pick out uh, Phil Lesh's bass. I mean, you can pick out a lot of these different people. But it still feels very much Crosby. I mean, very much David Crosby's work and his, his vision. And it was, it was recorded over kind of a lengthy period of time. And they would sort of come and go, which is cool because, you know, they weren't on this tight schedule. So it really gave them time to kind of improvise, to just sort of come up with things on the fly. And, and it sounds like that. It sounds like they really had time to let this stuff, let this material breathe. And they, it wasn't just like record it quick, 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 quick. So... You know, like I said, there, there's, there really is no other record, I think, out there that sounds like this. It's, you know, if, if you read kind of assessments of it now, they, you know, it, it call it sort of a pioneer and freak folk. <laughs> I guess that's a label. Uh, psychedelic folk. And it, you know, it really is sort of kind of sounds all of these things. You know, what was interesting is it was kind of panned by critics when it came out, uh, Robert Christgau, Christgau gave it a D minus. Rolling Stone <laughs> said, quote, a perfect oral aid to, di to digestion. There you go. But since then, the record has achieved cult status. Um, and, and is really, really appreciated as, as this, this bold kind of, you know, visionary recording and i really think it was i really think it was i mean i think it's crosby at his best really you know something else interesting only about half of these songs you know give or take about half of them actually have lyrics uh now I, I think they all have crosby's vocals but about half of them are are where his his vocals are just used you know at, almost as an instrument you know they're wordless and in some of these really complex, almost like sort of choral, you know, where he, he layers his vocals and, and harmonizes with himself. And, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's really complex stuff. Very interesting. So, you know, what, what are some highlights here? Well, it opens with Music is Love, which, you know, is great. It's sort of this almost feels like kind of a campfire sing-along, real loose. It's Mainly, you can hear Crosby and Neil Young. I, I, Neil Young's vocals are actually as prominent as Crosby's are on this. Hey, so it almost sounds like as much of a, of a Neil Young song as Crosby. It's interesting that it opens. But, it, you know, it's just you know, acoustic guitars and them. it's almost like a mantra. You know, music is love, music is love. And I think Nash is in there, too, a little bit kind of further down in the mix. But definitely hear Neil Young in there prominently. Then it goes into Cowboy uh, cowboy Movie, which is an interesting, almost like about an eight-minute song. And it's kind of the, the most straightforward kind of rocker on, on the album. And it, you know, it unfolds this real complex sort of cowboy, you know, sort of Western movie with all these different characters. And, and, and it's, it's been widely acknowledged. It's a thinly veiled account of sort of all the romantic entanglements of CSN and why, you know, there's there a lot of, uh, you know, girlfriends going from one to another and people stealing girlfriends and, and how that has added to tension in the band. And so it's kind of cool. Crosby creates these this sort of Western tale and these Western characters. And each one of these characters clearly represents you know, Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young and uh, it's a pretty fascinating song. 
something else that really stands out is Jerry Garcia's killer guitar soloing. I mean, he, he's just playing all over it. What's interesting is there's an alt. I'm going to talk about this. There's, this is sort of the deluxe edition that was released recently. There's an alternate take on here with Neil Young taking a lot of the lead uh, guitar as well. Laughing, I think, is the peak, the highlight, maybe the highlight of Crosby's songwriting career. This is just a song that takes you to a whole nother place. Just beautiful. And, and, and I'll tell you what really makes the song for me is Jerry Garcia, again, his gorgeous pedal steel playing. You know, Jerry Garcia was, of course, experimenting with the pedal steel guitar during this era. It, very soon after this, he kind of stopped working on it and, and, and really never returned to it. But, uh, you know, you listen to some of the pedal steel on, you know, American Beauty. And, and I think there's some on um, Working Man's Dead, you know, the Grateful Dead albums. He plays some on, on Deja Vu, uh, CSNY's um, The Teacher Children. He's on that. Uh, play some on Graham Nash's solo album. But I think the best example of Jerry Garcia's uh, pedal steel playing, and he was really good, was laughing. I mean, it's just this, this soaring, gorgeous playing on there. And, and it's, that song just takes you to a whole nother place. Uh, another real interesting song, I think, is What Are Their Names? Which started off as just this jam in the studio. And again, you can hear Jerry Garcia's guitar playing pretty prominently. But this real snaking, I mean, it sounds like this perfect Grateful Dead improvisation getting going. But then Crosby kind of lays these lyrics on top of it, you know, these vocals. And, and, he, and he gets you know, a lot of people singing with him. I think that's where Grace Slick comes in and, and, and uh, Paul Kantner and these others. And, you know, I, I think typically sort of, counterculture paranoid lyrics you know um in that song but it but it's, it's it is a fascinating song i also really like the the trio of songs that close this album out uh all three of them are wordless but they're just these vocal arrangements song with no words which crosby had had for a while he does this beautiful duet with graham nash on there and then Orleans, which is, man, just the layered Crosby vocals on there. It's just otherworldly. It's so great. And so Orleans actually is, I think it's a traditional song that he, he arranged here. And then it closes with, I'd swear there was somebody here, which really is ghostly. And, and you can't help but imagine he's sort of trying to you know communicate in some ways, you know, with his lost love right you know christine hitton who had passed away so you know the those i think are some of the peaks on here i mean it, it really is a fascinating listen just real briefly mention the expanded edition that came out i guess what is this 2021 was when when this came out and it's double disc you know so there's a second disc here of just fantastic demos and outtakes there's an additional bonus track called kids and dogs which is gorgeous another you know wordless song but with crosby's beautiful vocal improvisations but what i love is is there's two acoustic guitars one of them is crosby one of them again is jerry garcia and the interplay the acoustic interplay on there is just i think it's a pretty long song isn't it six seven minutes something like that but it's just awesome so, yeah, I mean, this is well worth having. It's kind of beautiful packaging here as well. You can see in there. And also in here is, is a fantastic booklet with an excellent kind of detailed essay and, you know, photographs from the sessions here. Yeah, it's just, just great, great stuff. So yeah, you know, I, I mean, again, if if this is something you haven't explored, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's it's just a unique sounding record, <clears throat> excuse me, and it just you know can take you to to a different place. And I think you know, again, with Crosby's passing, it's 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 it was the first thing I reached for, you know, when when I wanted to listen to something, you know, to 
going to remember him by. And I think it is his lasting masterpiece. So there you go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Please do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. Like the videos, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Mm -hmm.